homework rewards. Today we're going to work on a geometric vector question. This is 12.2-7 from Calculus Early Transcendentals, 7th edition by Stewart. So the question says, in this figure uh, we've got vectors a, b, c, and d, and we're looking to express c and d in terms of a and b. So how can we express this vector c as some sort of scaling addition subtraction of a and b. So the game plan for this, you'll see that vectors a and b are tail to tail, which means that we can use the parallelogram rule to add them up together. So first what we'll do is we will complete the parallelogram to find what a plus b is and see if that helps us figure out what vector c and d are. And then next, we will also look at a minus b and b minus a, because you'll notice that this vector over here goes from head to head. If you don't remember the vector parallelogram rules, uh, you can actually check out a lesson on myhomeworkrewards.com. The link will be in the description below. So once we complete that parallelogram, it will help us express c and d in terms of a and b. So you can pause the video now to try to finish the parallelogram. I'm actually going to rewrite it. So I will draw A over here and B this way. That's A and that's B. So A goes from point P to Q and B goes from P to R. We also have a line at QR, so we'll draw that across, and vector C goes from point P to that line, like so. This is vector C, and vector D starts where C hits that line and goes to R. So D is over there. So like I said, the first thing that we'll do is we'll complete the parallelogram. So to do that, we basically want to redraw A over here and redraw B over there. And then we will draw a line all the way across. That was poorly done. Try again. All the way across. And this vector here represents A plus B. So the parallelogram, I'll fix this, that looks like a multiplication. Parallelogram rule is uh, convenient when the vectors are tail to tail, like over here, A and B. And you can see that by moving vector B over here, we've basically created a situation where the vectors are now head to tail. So it's very clear why this vector across here is equal to A plus B. So now this will help us find vector C. You can see that it's actually right along that point or right along the vector AB, but it's shorter. So just from inspection, it actually looks like it's about half the length. And you can convince yourself this is true because on the other side, you have A and B and you would have an equal distance over here C. Essentially, this is symmetric, so we can confirm that 2 times vector c is equal to a plus b. And isolating for c gives us 1 half of a plus 1 half of b. So that wasn't so bad. And now we will deal with vector d. So vector d is going in this direction which is sort of opposite of a plus b. Now, if you can't remember if this vector over here is a minus b or b minus a, it actually might help to draw them out. So if we had a minus b, that would be the same as having a plus negative b. So negative b would go in that direction. And when vectors are head to tail, the resultant vector starts at the tail of the first one and goes to the head of the last one. So this is a minus b.
If we do it the other way around, we can do positive b, which pointed that way, and minus a, which would go the other way around. And this vector over here would point this direction, and it would be b minus a. Oops. b minus a. So notice that this vector d is pointing this direction, which is the same as b minus a. Again, taking into consideration the symmetry, this side or this part of the vector and that part of the vector will be the same. So we can write this out as vector d is equal to 1 half of b minus 1 half of a. Now, another way you could have done this was realizing that you can get to vector d by going in the negative c direction and then adding vector b. So that was the other way we could do this is say vector d is equal to negative c plus b which equals negative, we know this was 1 half a plus 1 half b plus b. So we'll end up with a positive 1 half b minus 1 half a. And that gives us the same answer. So to recap, this question asks us to use the geometric vectors a and b uh, and express c and d as scalar multiples of a and b. We tackled this problem by completing the parallelogram, mostly because the vectors a and b were tail to tail. We saw that vector c went along the same direction as a plus b and was half the length. And then we saw that vector d went in the direction of b minus a and again was half the length. Hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you would like to do some lessons, review some lessons, or practice some vector questions, check out myhomeworkrewards.com. There are other questions for chemistry, physics, biology, and English. You can also earn rewards from top brands like Garage, Fairweather, Ardeen, Columbia, and Dynamite. Happy learning.